Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for the town of Pelham for Monday, March 16th, 2015, to order. We will begin with an invocation led by Councillor Durley, followed by the singing of the national anthem, and I would ask all who are able to rise. Dear God, who has given us grace to make our common goals unto thee, and who does promise that when two or more are gathered unto thy name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the petitions of thy servants, as may be expected of them. Grant all in his council chambers the knowledge of truth, justice, and honor in all considerations placed before them. Provide us in this chamber, O Lord, strong minds and discerning spirit as we deliberate over the business of our town. That we move forever forward to ensure the town of Pelham continues to be a vibrant, caring, and creative community. May God bless all in our community and grant us in this chamber the wisdom, will, generosity, and determination to guide the town of Pelham through the challenges and successes that lie ahead. Amen. 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 Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot law, in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, Councillor Papp, Councillor Gurley, for leading us in those. Before we uh, officially begin the agenda, I'd like uh, to introduce uh, our new Director of Public Works, Andrea Clementio, and I would ask the CEO to give us a brief uh, synopsis of our new Director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce Andrea to the team. Uh, today is Andrea's first day as the Director of Public Works, and she has uh, big shoes to fill as our previous Director, Mr. Mantle, has now retired. Uh, Andrea's previous position uh, was in the Public Works Department, uh, Manager of Water and Wastewater, and she comes to us with uh, impeccable credentials uh, in that area, uh, something that we value with uh, certainly the water system that we have that we're very proud of. Uh, Andrea is also a PNG and brings a, a vast wealth of knowledge and information with regards to engineering. Uh, and again, we're thrilled to have on our team, and uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to welcome her. Thank you very much, Mr. CA. Welcome, Ms. Clementio. Thank you. It has been moved by Councillor Junkin, seconded by Councillor Durley. Be it resolved that the agenda for the March 16th, 2015 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Do we need to add the item of the regional council report? No, it was on the agenda. It's just being added as a... Okay, thank you. Uh, just to note that there, I was conferring uh, about the regional council's report. Councillor Beatty is here. There was a report circulated a little bit late. Uh, because of technical problems, Councillor, um, so we will be having that report on the agenda. Any any changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. That is, any conflicts of interest that any members may have. Do any members have any conflicts they need to disclose? Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a conflict with item 13.2.3. YMCA MOU, it speaks of the role of the Y and the role of a fitness center in our community center. And uh, my wife owns <coughs> a building in which there is a fitness center. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Any others, conflicts? Can that be so noted, please? Thank you very much. The next item is uh, hearing of presentations, delegations, and uh, the regional report. This is. Um, some background. This is a Go Service Advisory video that um, 
some of those uh, mares in the in Niagara that were that are affected by directly by Go Service um, would be um, are in this video and there's other uh, portions to it. It was asked by the region that we um, play this video at our council meeting, and so we're obliging them in that. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Since October of last year, a team from Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, Grimsby, Niagara on the Lake, Lincoln, and Niagara Region has been working together, coordinating our efforts to bring daily ghost train service to Niagara. We'd like to provide you with an update on our progress, as well as some key future milestones. GO train was identified by the region as the number one priority. As a matter of fact, it was an election issue during the by-election in Niagara Falls spring of last year. We are unified as a community to get the familiar green and white trains rolling through our community. We met recently in late 2014 with the Premier and her Chief of Staff, as well as Transportation Minister Del Duca and his Chief of Staff, as we discussed how we could move daily GO train commuter service to Niagara Falls forward. At the meeting with the Premier, it was directed to us to work closely with her officials to explore all options related to GO train service in Niagara. We report back to her in early 2015 with cost-effective and viable options to make daily GO train service possible. To undertake this work, we've assembled a project team with input from every community in Niagara, working together to present a viable and realistic, compelling business case to present back to the Premier. Our business plan will map out a scenario for daily GO train commuter service that connects Niagara to the GTA through <coughs> Hamilton. It will be a solution that is innovative, affordable, and doable within a year. We have the support of Niagara's MPPs and MPs. We have the support of our local elected leaders. And we have the attention of Queen's Park and the Premier. Now is the time for Niagara to demonstrate there is an urgent and real demand for the service. We need our municipalities, residents, businesses, <coughs> community organizations in every corner and community in Niagara speaking with one voice to let the provincial decision makers know now is the time to go to Niagara. Go Rail expansion can be an economic game changer for Niagara, a catalyst for growth, development, and jobs. We know Go is important to our community. In the coming weeks, we are launching a number of ways to get Niagara speaking out of the benefits of how daily Go train service is critical to Niagara's future. We need everyone getting involved to make this a reality. We believe that through the strength of our business case, the power of our active, unified voice, we can secure a clear commitment from the province in 2015 to bring daily GO trains to Niagara. But we need your help. Our working group team want you to be involved, informed, and updated because we need your active participation and together as a unified team, we're going to be successful. And if I could quote Spencer Fox, president of ES Fox, GO train will be the economic silver bullet for Niagara. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, the audience at home was able to hear uh, that. It wasn't uh, that great here in the chamber, but I would encourage all and uh, to, to view it online. And I think the link is provided with uh, tonight's agenda. This does follow up on a um, on a motion that this council. Uh, approved last year about uh, go rail commuter service and uh, there are some other items on the agenda a receipt of the letter that was sent uh, to the premier from that was signed by all of the uh, mayors of Niagara so thank you very much for playing that Madam clerk next on the agenda is the uh, report from regional councillor Brian Beatty thank you for joining us this evening councillor thank you mr. mayor and to you and council and to the clerk's office my apology uh, the, my tech technician has never heard of someone having two routers fail within a five-day period. It's a case where it's been rather interesting trying to get it through. Just have a few short items to make comment on, but be willing to answer any questions. Uh, first one, of course, is you've seen it in the paper, but the Council Remuneration Report was approved for this year and subsequent years unless changed by a subsequent council, and the tax stays, stays the same as one-third uh, as tax-free. Tax 
Uh, the second thing I'd like to point out is at the beginning of planning and development, the tax increment that it was given for the Niagara the Gateway uh, uh, Economic Zone and Centre Community Improvement Plan is the first in what I view as, as a trophy recognition of the value of having incentives to bring new industry to Niagara. Uh, we're looking forward to that, uh, that food uh, um, preparation uh, industry that's, that's located at 316 Enterprise Drive in the City of Walnut. Hopefully it's the first of many. Under public health, uh, I think it's important to note that we had one year, uh, one year extension, or pardon me, we've had one year of convalescent care program for 20 beds at Lynn Haven. They actually significantly almost more, more than doubled the number of people that they serve, and that's at far less cost than keeping people in the hospital for a longer period of time. And the Lynn has uh, granted an extension to that uh, particular one. So there's a spelling error. Long-term care is long-term care. Um, and Another very good news story, I haven't got the exact date, but I believe it's within the next year. Rather than having the municipal waste pickups, which are very frustrating for people, long lines and so on in terms of getting through, uh, we're establishing permanent municipal hazard waste depots. If they're to be established, there already, already is one for our community in, in Grimsby, but it's the case one will now be established at the Humberston Landfill site, at the Thorough Transportation Yard, which is on the road into the Walker Brothers Landfill site and there will be a partial service at Bridge Street public uh, drop-off in, in Fort Erie. I think that's good news for everyone in terms of making certain that those uh, hazardous waste don't end up in the, in the landfill site and probably will encourage uh, more, more people using it on a regular basis. And I've got one inquiry from a citizen in terms of that I'm going to ask of the waste management. There's been recent news reports about the spiral of uh, high efficiency light bulbs and the dangerous heavy metals assessor. I'll be inquiring at the next meeting as to what plans are being put in place or would they consider picking those up along with the battery pickups when they do it on occasion through the course of the year. So that's my report. Be willing to answer any questions on, on other items that are in the report. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Beatty, for your report. Do members of Council have any questions for Regional Councillor Beatty? Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, it's a bit of a hiatus week because of March break, uh, so we do meet with Council uh, next week. I had to double check in terms of the date for the next Council meeting because I thought it's February 26th was this one, and it's not March 26th, but it's because of the one week of March break. Thank you very much. Very good. We'll see you okay. next week. Thank you, Councillor. It has been moved by <coughs> Councillor Kersey, seconded by Councillor Papp. Be it resolved that the Regional Councillor Beatty's report of March 16th, 2015 be received for information. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is uh, adoption of minutes of council. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King. Be it resolved the following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Minutes of the regular meeting of council of March 2nd, 2015. Any errors or omissions in those minutes? <coughs> there being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. There are very rarely errors or omissions, so thank you for your diligence. The next item, uh, consent agenda items to be uh, considered in block. Are there any uh, items that members of council like, would like to uh, deal with separately? Councillor Papp? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Under information, I'd like to lift 11.5.6, Town of Fort Erie motion regarding the Canadian Motor Speedway. Okay, thank you. Any others? Thank you. <clears throat> it's been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King. Be it resolved the following consent agenda items be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. The recommendations from the Committee of the Whole meetings of March 2nd and March 9th and the minutes of the Committee of Whole meetings of March 2nd and the <laughs> minutes of the public meeting under the Planning Act, Committee of the Whole, March 9th. There's action correspondence of a routine nature. The first is from the Niagara Folk Arts Festival event of municipal significance. And the recommendation is be it resolved that the correspondence dated March 4th from the Niagara Folk Arts Festival regarding the proposed event of municipal significance on May 18th, 2015 be received and hereby designated as an event of municipal significance and the clerk be directed to so advise the Folk Art Festival. The next is the letter of resignation from the from Councillor Akursi, be it resolved that the correspondence dated March 11th, 2015 from Councillor Akursi, advising of the Councillor's resignation from the Architectural Design Advisory Committee be received and accepted with regret, and the Council appoint one member of Council to the ADAC effective immediately. The next item is um, from AK Wig 
T um, Parents Council, be it resolved that the correspondence from the AK Wig Elementary School principal, I'm sorry, Mary Zawalik, requesting assignment of a crossing guard at the intersection of Region Road 20 and Hay Street be received and referred to staff for investigation and report. Then there are four items of information for correspondence. The first, Canada Post Community Box, City of Woodstock. The second, 2015 Premier's Award for Agri-Food Innovation Excellence. The third, NNG's Zavitz regarding the Community Centre. And, and the fourth, request for comments, review of the Grove Plan, Niagara Escarpment Plan, Oak Ridge's Moraine Conservation Plan, and Greenbelt Plan, request for comments. Then we have uh, Regional Municipality of Niagara, information or <coughs> action items, there are two. As I mentioned earlier, that letter from Regional Chair and Niagara Mayors regarding Go Rail Service, and the second, Niagara Region adoption of the 2015 Levy Operating Budget. And finally, some committee minutes for information, Library Board minutes of January 28, 2015, and Mayor's Youth Advisory Council minutes of January 13th. Thank you for your patience as I work my way through that. Do any members have any comments, questions about any of those items? Councilor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, item 11.5.2, uh, the 2015 Agri-Food Innovation <coughs> Excellence Award. Uh, I would like to really draw attention to that because we have several agricultural sites in the town that have gone to great efforts to do value added to that. So I would like uh, uh, staff, if they could, to make sure that everybody uh, knows about this. There are, it's an extremely prestigious award and there's some money attached to it as well. And I think we do have more than one deserving uh, uh, participant in, in our town. So make sure that the people that uh, uh, that are in the agricultural community are aware of this and encourage them to to apply for that because it is, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a great thing to uh, to be able to put this on your on your building and in your farm and uh, bring some attention to your actual business. Thank you very much, Councillor, for highlighting that. Any others? Okay, there being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Councillor Papp, you lifted an item. I did, uh, Mr. Right Mayor. now, I believe the motion is to receive. If you'd like to amend that motion, go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, there is a self-explanatory letter that's addressed to all of us from the town of Fort Erie, which basically outlines that their commitment and ongoing support of the construction and development of probably one of the most significant projects in this whole region, and that is the speedway located just outside the town of uh, Fort Erie. I can't, I'm not going to get into a great deal of detail other than to say that having been around to a number of different types of races of this nature throughout North America, I can tell you that this type of incentive as part of the economic development strategy of the region will be beyond your imagination. The uh, jobs, the technology, the um, uh, just the fun, the sheer nature of it will be a drawing card for millions of people within the GTA, the Rochester, Buffalo, uh, you name it. Uh, this is an incredible, it's been working on it for the last number of years and I, I emphasize that I, I support this resolution and particularly in the light of the fact that the region revisit the inclusion of this as a priority and I know Mr. Mayor that you mm -hmm. will support me and members of the regional council that I can't tell you and there's an article that appeared in the Tribune on the 13th in the sports page that pretty well highlights what this means. Um, some of you may or may not know uh, this track has been developed by some of the top people in NASCAR and one of them is Jeff Gordon if you're familiar with it, he is probably the Penemptel uh, spokesperson. I, I have to say this, I personally met him, and I can't tell you his knowledge and experience is beyond, and he is uh, so excited about this coming to this area. I can hardly wait to get the ground broken on this, and, uh, and by the way, I did do some racing last year, but I won't do that again. Uh, <laughs> the bottom line is that it is such a, it involves and is in integrated with all kinds of other components, both the college and the universities, and hopefully that we'll support this. And I wanted to know, Mr. Mayor, that they have the circulation list, I'm not sure if that's it's in, in, uh, implied, but also that it should go back to the region to say, <coughs> please include this as part of it, I know you will. Okay. So uh, that being said, that I uh, would ask that the item 11.5.6, that this the resolution contained therein, passed by the Council of the Town of Fort Erie, regarding the Canadian Motor Speedway, be endorsed and supported. 
in this resolution be afforded to all appropriate our, our parties, including the region, as outlined in the communication. I move that and I need a seconder. Okay, thank you, Councillor Papp. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Durley? Thank you. Uh, any further discussion regarding the matter? There being none, I'm going to call the question. Thank you, Councillor Papp, for raising it. I call, call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Councillor, thank you. for raising thank that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, members of Council, for the support. The next item on the agenda is uh, the mayor's report, my report, and I'd like to highlight a few items. Uh, it was, it's been a busy time since our last uh, <coughs> council meeting and a number of, uh, of awards, actually. <coughs> the first, uh, I had the, the honor and pleasure to um, present a plaque to Gary and Rosemary Chambers on behalf of council and to speak about their numerous contributions as they were awarded by the Kinsmen uh, of Font Hill and District, the 2014 Citizens of the Year. They were part of the 150th and the 160th anniversary commemorations of the former village of Fenwick. They served on the Downtown Beautification Committee and assisted with the revitalization of Downtown Fenwick specifically, uh, led efforts to improve and uh, designate the historic uh, Fenwick flagpole, and which is the only heritage flagpole in Ontario, possibly Canada. Uh, they worked to, um, uh, they are working to maintain and enhance the uh, historic Maple Acre Library building and property. Uh, as friends of the Maple Acre Library and also on a subcommittee uh, for that, working to improve Old Pelham Town Hall, the, certainly with the interior revitalization and now with the exterior revitalization of the World War I cenotaph and that uh, German mortar. And they also served on the uh, Pelham Heritage Committee. Um, Tremendous, tremendous supporters of, of heritage through our community, and it was uh, certainly evident by those that were present uh, that they are well loved uh, across the community um, and uh, well appreciated. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Councillor Junkin and uh, Councillor Durley for, and also a number of Recreation and Cultural Wellness staff uh, and Public Works staff uh, for, for being there. And uh, it was a real treat again to be part of that uh, annual. 17th Annual Pelham Citizen of the Year Award presentation. Congratulations to Gary and Rosemary Chambers and thank you for your work. Um, I also uh, participated in the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council meeting of March 4th. You'll be getting these minutes um, as, as things progress after our April meeting, but I did want to highlight and offer special thanks to uh, Tia Taylor, President, and Frank Adamson, uh, First Vice President of the Fawn Hill Rotary Club for attending they have very, very generously offered to develop a partnership with the EMIAC for the benefit of Pelham's youth. It's still quite early in terms of uh, what that means, but they offered it and uh, we've done a bit of a brainstorming session with the executive of the, the uh, Mayor's Youth Advisory and we'll be bringing some recommendations on what that could mean in, in this year and in coming years. But I wanted to thank uh, members of the Rotary Club for that. <coughs> we also had the Niagara Community Design Awards. The CAO is getting this uh, trophy uh, here. This, Mr. CAO, this is supposed to be a bird. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess you can see what that, what that looks like. The head beak. and the body. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's quite, it's quite, quite the uh, impressive uh, trophy. We also have some um, other plaques that we can hang on the wall that aren't as uh, dangerous. Um, but along with uh, the CAO, pl the uh, Planning and Development staff, I had the pleasure of attending uh, on behalf of Council the annual Niagara Community Design Awards. This award is, uh, is because of the East Fawn Hill Secondary Plan and Architectural Design Guidelines. We, uh, the town uh, won for Best Policy and Plan for 2015 and um, it, was, it was a great to win this award and to be among those uh, others that were nominated. So it, it implies the great work that our community has done over many, many years uh, for this. And I think certainly most recently uh, what recent councils have done in order to uh, ensure that the community, that the vision for the uh, new East Fawn Hill area is integrated with uh, existing community, is walkable, cyclable, has those architectural design guidelines to them. Uh, that have that special look and feel, and, and that was the rationale for the for the award. So very very pleased uh, to accept this, and uh, Councillor Durley and Councillor King were present as well on Thursday when we presented one to our um, partners 
in this, the planning partnership and a small ceremony that we had here at, uh, at the council chamber. So congratulations to the planning partnership and uh, thank you to the region for this award. I also had the, thank you for moving that, also had the uh, pleasure to attend uh, the Bike Walk Friendly Summit and provide uh, thanks to the keynote address, uh, Hamilton Councillor Matthew Green, mm -hmm. about the work that they're doing. The event was <coughs> attended by very many members of the Active Transportation Committee. Uh, I asked the, the clerk to include, and you'll see it on the next slide as part of the agenda, some of the milestones that Pelham was celebrated with, uh, with this, uh, certainly a bike friendly community, uh, wayfinding signage, and uh, also the community, first community in Niagara to receive the uh, walk friendly designation from Walk Canada. These were highlighted in, as part of the successes of that. So we're very appreciative of that. I, I want to, uh, I know Councillor Kersey was there, so I, I'm, I'm not trying to steal thunder, I'm giving congratulations. Uh, this is um, something that we are thrilled to receive, our community, and some hard, hard work from the community. This is a um, re receipt of the top 100 festivals and events in Ontario, festivals and event in Ontario, Pelham Summerfest. Uh, it was awarded on um, March 6th, and I know that uh, members, Councillor Kersey was there, Ms. Van Ravensway was there, and other very, very dedicated members of our community were there to accept this. Uh, they included um, Mr. Todd Barber of the uh, Downtown Beautification Committee, V. Clark, the Active Transportation Committee. Um, uh, was Kathleen Goodwin there? <coughs> wasn't there? Kathleen wasn't there and John Wink wasn't there, wasn't but they were also um, dedicated members of the community. This is huge uh, for an event that started in uh, just a few years ago and now it's evolved into one of the top 100 in Niagara. I think there's um, only two or three other communities in Niagara that have an event like this. Uh, congratulations, Councillor Kersey and members of the committee and uh, pass along our thanks and of course staff as well. Ms. Van Ravensway for, for leading this uh, at the staff level. And it is something that the entire community gets involved in. So this is really the community's award, of course. So congratulations to all involved on that. It's, it's wonderful and we'll hang proudly in our, uh, in our town hall. And uh, finally, I'll, I'll end off on another happy note. Uh, special thanks to Councillor King and Councillor Papp and our clerk. Nancy Bizzotto and Julie Cook of the uh, Recreation, Culture and Wellness for participating in the annual Big Brothers Big Sisters of South Niagara Bowl for kids sake. It was a, a country themed event and it's always nice when my bowling <coughs> score matches my golf score. So uh, it was congratulations <laughs> to all uh, and <laughs> it, was, it was a great event. So thank you Councillor King for uh, organizing the King's Kickers I think team. My pleasure. So thank you very much. So that's my report. And again, congratulations to all. It has been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor Durley. Be it resolved that Council received Mayor Augustine's report of March 16th, 2015 for <coughs> information. Any comments or questions, Councillor Papp? Very quickly, uh, Mr. Mayor, again, um, like you have said to all the members of the Summerfest Committee, um, I was recently in Hamilton last week and meeting with some of my colleagues and other jurisdictions. and. One of the discussions, of course, is the Pan Am Games and a variety of things. And I was so stunned and delighted. The first thing they brought up was that Summerfest was one of the top 100 in the province and wanted to know more about it. Mm -hmm. And they were very curious. These are people that put on arts and festivals in the, in the area of city of Hamilton. And uh, uh, you'll be probably be getting some contacts and information from them. They were just blown away by what we were able to do in a smaller little community like that with the resources that we have. So congratulations, Gary, to the members of the committee and all of the town. It's just, you don't know how widespread this has gone out when people are watching what we're doing. Thank you very much, thank Councilor Papp. Councilor Kersey, go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't express on behalf of the committee uh, our thanks to all of the town staff, from the parks crew to the roads crew to the Treasury Department to directors who came out and, and served food. Even our CAO was out there f serving food on our Sunday uh, community breakfast. Um, but most especially to Ms. Van Ravensway and uh, Sally and her, their team. Uh, without them, this would not happen. It truly has become a community festival in the broadest sense of the word, not just in the celebratory part of it, but in the 
making it happen part of it. it. It couldn't happen and couldn't have grown to the level that it has without all of their involvement. And uh, so please uh, pass that on to all of our staff that, that that's how we feel, Mr. CEO, if you would take that. Just appreciate that. Thank you very much, Councillor Kersey. And certainly thank you to the hundreds of volunteers that help out as well. And part of it, not just uh, serving breakfast, but in, in mm -hmm. the other parts of uh, Summerfest and as well as sponsors. The community really does come forward and uh, help sponsor the event so that it can be put forward as a, as a free event uh, to the community um, and be that, that wonderful event in our community. So congratulations again. Thank you. Um, nothing further. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you so much. The next item, now we're going to move to uh, staff reports requiring action. The first is it's been moved by Councillor Kirsty, second by Councillor Papp. Be it resolved that Council receive issue summary report regarding the delegation of authority of the Director of Community Planning and Development for the execution of a development agreement for an interim second dwelling on one lot <coughs> for information and further that Council consider the delegation of authority as follows. On matters of decision to enter into and execute development agreements concerning permission of a second interim dwelling on one unit, one lot, <coughs> the Council delegates such authority to the Director of Community Planning and Development except where such a decision may impact town identified heritage property structures and further that Council confirm that upon written confirmation by the Director, the Mayor and the Town Clerk may enter into said development agreement and further that staff be directed to prepare the necessary bylaw to affect the delegation of authority for consideration at the next regular meeting of Council. Comments or questions regarding this report, this is something that Council asked about. Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I, I do support uh, this initiative and uh, in fact, I think I was the one who, who yeah. pushed to have this yeah. done. Um, one of the thoughts that came to me uh, while I was reading this is what, what would be the fallback should the director refuse uh, permission to the proponent? And I wondered whether or not we should include within this direction a clause which would allow the proponent uh, the right to appeal to council as a, um, a secondary backup so that the proponent doesn't feel in the case that, it, that he was turned down that it was a personality thing, it, was, it would protect the director and uh, give the proponent a feeling that he has the right to appeal. Thank you. Mr. Glover, a response? Um, uh, in, in drafting the, the concept of this uh, um, proposal, um, it was always my opinion that, that if there was a disagreement or, or um, accusation even um, of the de decision of the, of the Director of Planning, that the applicant would be able to appear as a delegation to bring it to council's attention and council would be able to deliberate, uh, ask them to come back or put it on the agenda for future uh, meetings. I'd be more than happy though if council directed me to add a clause in there that, that uh, on disagreement that um, they come to council, but I would expect too that on all disagreements <coughs> that they be coming to council um, because that's a, an avenue that they would logically take. Uh, so it's up to council what you choose and I would be happy to oblige. Okay, thank you very much Mr. Glover. Councillor Kersey. In that case, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that an uh, amendment be made to the proposal that uh, upon disagreement uh, that the proponent could in fact appeal to council. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure that uh, both the CAO and the clerk are informing me on both sides that it, it, we don't need necessarily a, uh, a special motion or amendment uh, as long as council um, wants that uh, included in the bylaw. Uh, and we can see consensus around the table. Okay, Councillor Papp, do that. Uh, I tend to agree with the staff. I guess my question through you to the Director of Planning CEO is, is it implied or is it structured in the actual delegation of authority that there is an appeal process? Uh, I'm being the devil's advocate so that if, if I disagree, you know, I, if it's implied that they can come directly to Council, that's one way. But I'm thinking, uh, when I last remember we discussed this, you had used other similar areas where in other municipalities they do this. Is that correct, if, if I'm not mistaken? Mr. Glover? The, on this issue with the, the second one, I, I've not dealt with this delegation. Uh, I think we're referring more to site planning <coughs> that nature. So what I'm getting at is that uh, picking up on what Councillor Kersey's saying, 
I don't want to just left. If there needs to be a specific clause, that's fine. If in fact uh, there needs to be a specific appeal mechanism, so that if somebody's rejected, if I'm you reject myself, I could say, okay, then I go directly to council. Does that need to be spelled out? I'm not clear. Uh, what I suggest, uh, it's implied first off that if, if and it can be uh, right. written to, as such to say that if you disagree with it, you can appear as in, in front of the council as a delegation to voice your opinion. Then council can direct staff to do whatever. Um, but if council feels that that we need a, an absolute, a clear mechanism to allow for an appeal, that's fine as well. We could put a clause in the, in the uh, should, bylaw. There should be a process. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm getting a note here from. The, the clerk, but I do notice uh, Councillor Durley wants to speak to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for clarity's sake, the only reason that uh, somebody would ask for a second interim dwelling would be to live in that while another house is being built. Is is this correct through you, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Glover? Um, uh, that is the perceived uh, use for, for this vehicle, yes, for this bylaw. Okay, so uh, if I may further, uh, that being said, I really can't understand why that wouldn't be granted because the condition would be that once you move into the new house, the old one's torn down. This is what we've done as council in the past, right, as, as doing that. So it, it's actually the same procedure, but it's, it's removing the step and perhaps a two-week wait for somebody to get it by making it come to council. So, you know, I, I'm thinking the, uh, I, I don't remember in my, 14 years here where that was ever turned down yeah. and I can't see wherever yeah, there possibly. would be turned down because where would these people live in a tent while they're building another house so, you know this is the uh, the thing so uh, I'm just questioning why <coughs> there would ever be perceived as as uh, being that request being turned down Mr. Glover uh, through you Mr. Mayor um, we have mechanisms in place now where the where the applicant is needs to enter an agreement and this is what we're talking about here which will have securities will have a legal uh, contract as to why and how the, the the existing dwelling needs to be removed and when so so it is pretty safe um, uh, if the mayor and clerk enters the agreement that, that the house would be removed that we have the mechanism to ensure that that house the first house is removed uh, in place of the or the new one is replaced um, the only provision here which we've exempted is um, Items of historic interest uh, identified by the town. Um, the, I think it should be uh, presented to council if there's a, an issue of a, a, that has an impact on a histor historic dwelling or building uh, that potentially could be torn down to build a new one. And um, I, I believe it should go back to council to, to uh, deliberate on that issue and instead of just staff looking at it. If it's a technical matter, staff can look at it. But if it's something greater than that, I think it should go back to council for review. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yeah, that, that, that clears it up. I just don't see why there would be any grounds to deny a person that second interim dwelling while the other one's being built. But anyway, okay, go ahead. Thank you. I think, I think the Council raised the issue because there may be occasions when, and so it's important to build in those, those uh, measures. The clerk has uh, been feverishly writing me a note here, and uh, she's anxious to uh, add to the discussion. Madam Clerk? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not so much anxious. I just do have some information <laughs> for members of council that these types of applications were historically heard by the Committee of Adjustment right. uh, through the minor variance process because uh, one house is permitted on one lot through the zoning bylaw. So Committee of Adjustment would consider uh, applications to allow for construction of a second dwelling on a lot. They would often then um, place conditions on the variance whereby the applicants would have a certain frame of time to complete the construction and then another further period of time to demolish the um, original dwelling. This was put in place to avoid the potential of having two houses on one lot, which is against okay, the um, provisions of the zoning bylaw. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, why so, did it, why it, it used to be with Committee of Adjustment, why is it now at Council's uh, table? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, it is still with the Committee of Adjustment, but uh, Mr. Glover um, and I have had discussions about um, reducing the time, the wait time for people, and, and uh, he was of the um, opinion and, and came forward to Council to say that this could be done through a delegation process. I would respectfully suggest that the bylaw would need to include some sort of um, either enforcement or, or both enforcement and appeal mechanism as a standard component of a bylaw of this nature. So I, I have offered to assist Mr. Glover in 
um, constructing that bylaw. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. You're welcome. Any other any others? You've heard the information. So, mm -hmm. uh, this the the bylaw will come to us at, at a future meeting, and we can uh, have the discussion then. Include those I include yep. those items. Okay, and the staff will take that as direction to include some of those items. Anything further? No, that's good. Thank you. There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councillor Junkin, seconded by Councillor Rubiak. Be it resolved that the <coughs> Council receive the issue sheet Canadian Heritage World War Commemorations Community Fund and the staff be directed to proceed with World War Commemorative Event as stated in the issue sheet and that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to enter into an agreement <coughs> for Heritage Canada for funding. Any discussion regarding this uh, particular matter? This is, uh, Funding that's available from the federal government for World War One commemorative events. Mm -hmm. Ms. Van Ravensway, in terms of the timing of the that event, uh, October twenty, uh, sorry, October seventeenth, is the suggested date. Is there a significant time date to that that's important to the community, or <coughs> can we hear, just hear more about that particular date? Mr. Mayor, um, <coughs> the uh, organizing committee met last week or two weeks ago and um, they discussed a date um, and they they discussed the uh, Saturday prior to Remembrance Day they discussed um, when would be the best and they came up with um, October the 17th uh, because they wanted this day to be special and um, for commemoration and um, <clears throat> not conflict with the Saturday before Remembrance Day and the annual events on that day. Uh, the committee will be meeting again um, next Monday, I believe, and uh, we'll be coming back to it. We will discuss the date again and make sure that that is the date that they would like to stick to. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's, I believe it's a Sunday before. Remembrance Day, there's uh, commemorations throughout the town mm -hmm. at the various cenotaphs, um, starting at Centennial Park, then moving to Old Pelham Town Hall, and then here to Peace Park. Um, I was thinking about it because it's such a wonderful and moving um, commemoration on those days, which also on that day, which also includes uh, a special service, um, most recently at the Baptist Church that it could also be <coughs> as part of a service at Old Pelham Town Hall or something might, might be uh, fitting, especially since it was uh, Remembrance Day really honors the end of World War I. So I'm pleased that the committee will be looking at that uh, date uh, as well, just to see if it's the right one that works for our community. Any other questions regarding this or comments? <coughs> there being none, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And thanks very much uh, to uh, both Councilor Junkin and the members of the committee. They're very active on that. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councilor Papp, seconded by Councilor Junkin. Be it resolved the Council receive the issue sheet regarding the YMCA Memorandum of Understanding for Information. And the council approved the memorandum of understanding between the town of Pelham and Niagara YMCA and direct staff to explore the viability of an operational business plan and related service outline. And that section 1I of the MOU be amended to state, quote, no financial hardship to the YMCA or the town of Pelham, unquote. And the council amend the architectural advisory design committee uh, advisory committee terms of reference to remove the ex officio status of the YMCA and provide full voting privileges. Any discussion regarding this, Councillor Durling? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before discussion, I would like to divide this uh, uh, this uh, recommendation and at least the third bullet to uh, uh, deal with that issue separately. Um, the third bullet being the voting status, is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. So let's deal with uh, the... Uh, the top portion and then the voting status after that. Thank you, Councillor. Um, to the uh, first part of the motion, which is regarding the MOU and approving that and then also amending the MOU to state about no financial hardship. Comments, questions? Councillor Papp? Just uh, very quickly, uh, Mr. CEO, in other situations, 
where I know the Y has entered into uh, agreements with local municipalities, not their own buildings. Uh, perhaps maybe have they in fact included this type of clause in there to protect both parties? Has that been? I don't, honestly, uh, Mr. Mayor, I couldn't answer that question. I don't know. Would could through you, Mr. Mayor, could I ask uh, Ms. Saint Amon, uh, if with discretion of council, if that's the case? Council, you're, you're speaking about the clause about the no financial hardship piece, right? That's okay. what I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I, I know whether or not there is another agreement that they have with another municipality. Does in fact, does that agreement include that type of okay. reference? Um, is, if it's okay with council, um, Council Saint Amand is the executive director of the Y of uh, Niagara, YMCA of Niagara. Would it be okay if she were to answer that question? If she hasn't answered the question, Ms. Saint Amand, would you mind coming forward to the podium, please, just for a moment? And as she's doing that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Kobe Hawkins and Leanne Standrick are also here, members of the board uh, of the YMCA of Niagara. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being here, Ms. St. Amon. To you, Mr. Mayor, the, an the answer to the question is yes, that has been included, included so in, in um, a memo of understanding right. and then moved on to a, a formal agreement um, at a later time. So that being said that Thank you, Ms. St. Amana. Thank you, Mr. You. Mayor. So that would be the, in reference to the one in Niagara Falls in particular or any other municipality that you have entered into agreements, there's duality in the uh, hardship side of it. Thank you. That's all I needed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Councillor Junkin. Yes, I had uh, several phone calls over the weekend uh, concerned business and perhaps uh, wondering if this is ever going to be tendered, and if it isn't going to be tendered, why wouldn't we be tendering this out to other organizations? So I, I don't know if we're going to do the memorandum of understanding, go down a certain width distance, and then perhaps if we can't come agreement with the why, would we tender it then, or should we indeed <coughs> be tendering it first and then try to come under agreement with whoever wins the tender? I'll just. How is that going to work? Okay, thank you very much. I think the CAO does uh, address this in his report. Mr. CAO, under alternatives? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that's correct. Under alternatives, uh, Council does have the uh, discretion to uh, go to the private sector market for uh, requests for proposals uh, for an oper operational business plan and related service outline. Um, I uh, so that is an option, uh, and I have noted that uh, after doing some research that um, uh, although it has happened in some occasions, it's not common. Uh, and the most relevant example I could find was the construction of the community center in Port Colburn. Right. Uh, they issued an RFP for service provision um, not once but twice, and no response to the call was made, and they ended up entering into an operational <coughs> agreement with the YMCA. Thank you. Councillor Junk? Uh, again, I guess I'm just wondering when would we do this? I guess what? So we would, uh, uh, go down with the Y, and then if we can't reach uh, an agreement with them, then we'll tender it? Mr. CEO? Well, I think you're sorry to answer the Council's question. Uh, council could do that. That's correct. Uh, yeah. Council could decide to um, not enter into the MOU and go to, again, the market and request for proposals for. Uh, for the services that um, uh, they'd be looking for. So it's completely in council's discretion. I guess, I, again, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, I, 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 guess, I guess one way, it doesn't matter one way or the other. I, I'm just wondering if maybe, uh, uh, I mean, going down the road with the Y, and, and, and I believe the Y is, uh, I'm not putting the Y down at all. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to have anyone to be partnered with, uh, the Y is a very nice, a good organization. I'm just thinking that uh, there's our other fitness um, uh, gyms in the area. These people have been uh, uh, in business five, six years. I'm, I'm sure they're capable of also uh, uh, bringing forth uh, a, a business plan that maybe we should be looking at. But whatever the council decides, I guess it doesn't matter. I guess if we go with the why and then if we can't meet with them, but it doesn't seem to be giving the other ones as much of a chance, perhaps. 
I'll just leave it at that. I, I just okay. sometimes wonder if maybe we shouldn't do the tendering, and then uh, uh, if we can't go with the one we like the best and go down that road, uh, it just seems to be more fair if we would have tendered this, that's all. That's my only concern. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Others uh, to the motion before us, Councillor Ribiak and then Councillor Durling. Thank you. Uh, with regard to this motion or with regard to uh, Councillor Junkin's point? It, it's open for debate. The motion's on the floor, Councillor. Thank you. Then, then let me make uh, two points. First, uh, ask a, a question uh, of, through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, the CAO or perhaps to the Treasurer, and that is that if we go ahead and, and, and approve the MOU with the Y, is that in any way a violation of our, our, uh, <coughs> our procurement policy? Mr. CAO? I defer to the Treasurer, Mr. Mayor. Madam Treasurer? For you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's not in violation of the, uh, the procurement policy. The business case that was developed was predicated on the YMEP partnership, which is a special circumstance right. under the policy. Thank you. Councillor? Thank you. Uh, so, so the second point, I'm, I'm going to support this, this motion. I think that uh, we've um, gone to, to uh, the, the trouble and, and the, the um, concern to <coughs> develop a business plan. It was predicated on uh, the YMCA operating the facility. I think one of the things that makes the YMCA um, a useful partner in addition to their experience in this area is that in fact they are a nonprofit and that um, in addition to keeping costs down and, and participation high, clearly there'll, uh, there'll be a contribution made quite, quite possibly to, uh, to the town in terms of the operation of, of the building. My, my view is that uh, uh, we are going to need an extremely experienced and competent partner in the operation of, uh, uh, of, of the community center as we are in the process of envisioning it. Uh, the alternative is likely going to be that we would have to operate it ourselves through our own uh, resources, our own staff, and I'm not seeing that as uh, any way as efficient a, a way of going through this thing. So I'm going to be supporting this. I think that going ahead and having a discussion with the why toward um, an appropriate contract is, uh, is is a wise and, and appropriate thing to do. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it, it was stated strongly at a couple of workshops we had <laughs> regarding economic development that Pelham is a unique community unto itself. Uh, and things that may work in other municipalities may not work in Pelham. Uh, things that work in Pelham may not work in other municipalities, and this is what's said. Uh, the main uh, context of why development or why inclusion in the uh, in the plan was suggested by Leisure Plan, who, who did a study for us. Uh, since Leisure Plan, we have a committee that is uh, uh, perhaps having some thoughts that uh, we should have a need in Pelham thing and not a Pelham YMCA, which certainly is a, uh, it's resounding quite loudly. Uh, the town of Pelham did give a lot of money to the Y in the development when it was first being built, uh, and now people are saying, why are we, why are we doing more? However, uh, since the MOU is not a binding uh, agreement, it's just a discussion opener. Uh, I have no problem in that discussion happening. Uh, our staff are very, very good in scheduling things. And, and in fact, if we're looking at just how are we going to schedule a gym or something like that, I'm sure our staff is fully capable of doing that. If it requires more expertise, uh, then perhaps we need to bring a specialist in. And if a Y is the specialist of choice, then that is fine. However, uh, I, I'm going to agree that we should sit down with the Y and do this, but also uh, I would like to give some thoughts later as to what we should include in the negotiation with the Y because there there are some things I, I think we do have some expertise especially in scheduling uh, in in the uh, recreation cultural and wellness departments that uh, are second to none I think they do such a great job in scheduling things like camps and and all of these things I'm sure that they could handle any kind of scheduling challenges that we do have uh, just saying that, uh, and again, when we come to the divided motion, I do have some more to say on that. However, since this is just a let's sit down and talk and see if we can come up with something, uh, you know, we can try this and see what's going to happen. If we 
get somewhere, great. If not, then there, there definitely will be uh, other considerations to be given. Okay, that's Thank my thoughts. Thank All right. You. Thank you, Counselor. Others? Um, I'd just like to uh, just speak to it very briefly. Um, the motion before us, I am supportive as well. Um, the Y is, uh, the YMCA is, is more than fitness. Um, and although we have some tremendous fitness facilities in our community, the Y is, as it says in the report, a charitable organization that is dedicated to the growth of all persons in spirit, mind, and body, and um, the sense of uh, community, really. Um, and they offer broad-based programming for all ages and abilities and provide subsidies for people who can't afford participation. Uh, and, and it does align with the town's uh, vision of being vibrant, creative, and caring. Um, Others have, uh, I, I like what, you're, what you said, Councillor um, Durley, about this is a discussion opener and that's what it is. And it really, when you read the, uh, the clauses in the MOU, that's clearly what it is. Uh, the memorandum of understanding is, is essentially signaling to the community in an open and transparent way that the two parties are going to start talking. Um, the, the main clause about this is clause B, which is the parties agree to explore the viability of an operational business plan and related service outline, which may result in a long-term service agreement that would facilitate the provision of a high-quality facility and programs to meet the needs of Pelham and surrounding communities based on the recent leisure plan research. So it's exploring the viability of an of a <coughs> operational business plan, um, and we can give direction, as Councillor Durley also indicated, in terms of the unique, unique community that we have here in Pelham. That's part of that negotiation and that uh, that discussion that uh, we will be having with the Y. I did also meet with, and I see him here this evening, the chair of the Architectural Design Advisory Committee today, and I appreciate Mr. Nichols' time um, to talk about this and offered because uh, several members of council were at that uh, meeting last week, and it was a concern of the Architectural Design Advisory Committee. Um, and I suggested that, among other things in our discussion, that it's something that the committee could have um, if they, they want to provide feedback to this council in terms of based on their experience and usage, uh, their vision for how this potential community center could be used. What's their best uh, recommendation to council? So it's to be um, positive um, direction in terms, or not direction, but advice to council in terms of what should or shouldn't be included in, in this type of negotiation as we move forward. So I think that's uh, very fruitful and I again appreciate Mr. Nichols' uh, time and uh, hope that he passes it along to that committee. So those are my thoughts. Uh, are there any others before I call the question? <coughs> Councilor Pat. I think uh, Mr. Mayor, you've hit on a very important aspect of uh, the whole understanding of how we're proceeding. It's a collaborative approach. The idea is to work through all the aspects of what we really want to see happen there to see if what we come up with is the best way of operating that and to that extent I think the work that the uh, ADAC has done has been phenomenal we have a incredible a, a variety of people that have brought all kinds of skills and expertise and the same could be said of the of the YMCA so I'm very supportive of uh, <coughs> what you have just stated is that we get engage them make sure that what, what we end up with is the an operational agreement that we're comfortable with that, that are more importantly that our citizens are comfortable with the services they're being affordable attainable they're, so I, I really have no uh, difficulty in supporting this direction thank you mr. Okay. Mayor. thank you Councillor Pat any others so I'm going to call the question on the first portion which is the uh, receiving approval of the memorandum of understanding and the amending of it to include the no financial hardship for both parties all those in favor any opposed that motion is carried <coughs> and now to the second part of the motion. Councillor Durley asked that this be dealt with uh, separately, and Councillor Durley indicated he wanted to speak to it. Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Since the uh, there is no agreement, formal agreement with the Y uh, at this particular point in time, I think it's premature to uh, give them full status voting 
privileges. They will not be, uh, it, when, if and when we ever do get an agreement there, I think that that is the time that this should kick in. Another item on the uh, agenda today deals with another party who is actually uh, a partner right now. Uh, that is a whole different story, but I feel that this is a little premature, <coughs> and I would be definitely voting against this at this particular time. They should stay on as the, with the status that they do have right now as ex officio and giving some advice for uh, design, perhaps if it's necessary. However, I, I don't agree that they should be a full partner until such time, if and when an agreement is made. Okay, thank you very much. Others to that uh, portion of the motion? Councilor Pat? Um, notwithstanding, I understand, Councilor Durley, your, your concern, but at the same token, I think that during the discussions that I've been present at, the input of all those uh, ex officio has been considered by ADAC, and I think as we move forward, I, I'm, I'm just I'm concerned about the urgency of getting the work done mm -hmm. and getting it done in a timely fashion, and I, I respect the fact that the operational agreement it, uh, is, is very significant. But in the meantime, as far as any input in how functionality of that community center, um, be it whether it's the ICE facilities or the community center, I think the YMCA or for this matter we'll be talking about the Panthers, uh, the Junior B team, is important as we move along because we're getting a stage uh, where I would say time is the essence. We've got to get to some sort of finalization. And uh, I, I would be supportive of this uh, only from the context that they would offer because the ultimate thing is I, I look at the word voting and all, what it boils down to is you come to a voting consensus of how you wish to see the building developed and designed and function. Ultimately, it's us that makes the decision whether we proceed with that, if that's important. And we still have to go through a public process, as I understand, <coughs> at some point to talk to the general public, if I'm not mistaken, as to whether what we've come up with is meets our debt. So um, I, I, I respect that, but I, I do think that the Y would serve as a very good strategic advisor, if you want to call it that, in the whole development of the design components of it and the functionality of that center. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Other councillors to this issue? Councillor Rubiak. Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm also in supportive of, um, uh, of, of the motion, and, and I see it quite differently than uh, the participation of the, 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 the owner of the Panthers, and, and we'll get into that one, I'm sure, in just a moment. I think that the purpose of the advisory committee is to give the best possible advice to, to us, but also because of the participation of the architects, the best information to them about the, uh, the design of the physical layout of, of the community center. And I think that, that what the Y has to offer in terms of their um, participation is, is very broad based. I think it would, it would speak to quite a number of different aspects of functioning within the, the, the community center. And I think with their, their, the experience background that they have, they probably have a great deal of very practical information to give kind of across the whole spectrum of considerations that, that ADAC no doubt is, is looking at in terms of what the design should be. So I see uh, their involvement as being pretty valuable. And um, I guess the status of, of having voting membership uh, simply means that when it comes time to uh, determining uh, what ought to happen in those rare events when a complete consensus isn't possible and therefore a decision has to be based on, on voting, then that's a pretty <coughs> broad direction and a very um, valuable direction from which to, to, uh, to have that kind of, of advice. So I'm going to support it because I think that there's a great deal that uh, the Y has to offer in, in that discussion that, that's a value and ought to, be, <coughs> ought to be taken into consideration very seriously. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other councillors? Uh, just to this, uh, um, Ms. Uh, St. Amand did speak to this at the uh, last Thursday's uh, Architectural Design Advisory Committee, um, as did others. Um, and, and I think when we put the terms of reference in place, um, we certainly knew that um, we wanted the involvement of the Y and they wanted to be um, at least at the table discussing things. Um, but it's interesting, her perspective, I'm not trying to put words in, in her mouth, but something like, or maybe it was the CEO that said this um, as well, that it's a bit of an awkward situation that, that's established with a ex officio member. Um, because it means, can they put their hand up? Can they not participate in the debate, etc.? Um, we have ex officio members and we've decided that in terms of 
uh, all of our advisory committees, four members of council, because we really do want to hear the advice of those members of the community. So the parallel here is, as Council Ribiak indicated, we want to hear the advice of the Y, and we want them to be a, a participating member in, the, in providing that advice. Council Papp indicated that that advice does ultimately have to come back to Council. Um, so I see this as, as more getting rid of that awkward nature that was expressed at the Architectural Design Advisory Committee um, and acknowledging that uh, they, they will provide very valuable advice as this uh, design moves forward. So I am supportive as well. Any other comments or questions? Are we ready for calling the question? Councillor Powell? Uh, quickly, just to build on that, that, that once this is done, and I know there's been some suggestion of some specialized groups working on the components, it's important, as you mentioned, that the ADAC people, uh, ADAC members will become involved, engaged, and collaborative with the Y because that's a given. <coughs> it should be a given so that it helps in helping us, helping them come back to us with suggestions. So that doesn't just apply to the Y, but apply to other working groups that we'll be establishing. So I hope that that's the case. And I think we'll be quite, uh, it's, it behooves us to do this, particularly in light and I hate to say this again, but I not hate to, but pleasure. This is the most significant project that's being built in the history of the town of Helen. Any, everyone and anyone who could, we can help get engaged and collaborate with us and coming up, and there'll be ones that are nay and agree or don't, but it's important that every piece of information and ability to be able to generate what we consider to be the best possible plan and the best possible use is, is integral. So all people involved in this is essential to this success, both financially and functionally. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor. Any others? Are we ready for calling the question? And the motion is that Council amend the Architectural Advisory, uh, sorry, Architectural Design Advisory Committee terms of reference to remove the ex officio status of the YMCA and provide <coughs> full voting privileges. All those in I call for a recorded vote, please, Mr. Chair. Yes, sure. you may. Madam Clerk, can you uh, do the recorded vote, please? Yes. <clears throat> so the motion before you is that the council amend the architectural advisory design committee terms of reference to remove the ex officio status of the YMCA and provide full voting privileges. And I will call for the vote uh, in alphabetical order by surname, recognizing that Councillor Akurzi is um, out of the room due to a conflict of interest. Councillor Durley. Opposed. Councillor Junkin. Opposed. Councillor King. Agreed. In support? In support. Councillor Papp. In favour. Councillor Ribiak. In favour. Mayor Augustine. In favour. The vote is four to two. The motion passes. Carried. Thank you very much. The motion is carried. And uh, I would ask Perhaps someone near the door can ask Councillor Percy to uh, please rejoin us. Do I need to sign it? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're done with that issue, and now we move on to the next issue. It has been moved by <laughs> Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King. Thank you very much, members of uh, those that were here for that uh, portion of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, be it resolved. The Council received the issue summary report relating to the participation of a representative from the Pelham Panthers Junior Hockey Club on the Architectural Design Advisory Committee for information, and the Council amend the Architectural, Advisory, Architectural Design Advisory Committee terms of reference to remove the ex officio status of the Pelham Panther Junior B representative and provide full voting privileges. Comments, questions on this recommendation? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I said earlier that I would have something to say about this and that I see this thing differently. I'm, I'm going to, to be opposed to, uh, to this motion. Um, in rereading the uh, terms and refer of reference of, uh, of ADAC, I note that there are currently 16 voting members, of which two are involved with hockey. I think hockey is well represented on, uh, on ADAC. I think one more may tend uh, to skew the decision making, however uh, little that might be, uh, when uh, those uh, th those occasions arise in ADAC's consideration when a decision has to be made by by vote. Um, so I'm I'm just just looking at that balance and thinking that uh, 
that uh, two, two is, is likely, uh, two representatives, two voting representatives are likely to cover most of the issues, if not all of the issues that, that hockey and hockey interests may have uh, in those considerations. It seems to me that, uh, that as an ex officio participant, um, Panthers uh, have the opportunity to put all of their views on the table and it would be taken into consideration. And most often I would think that, that decision making is by consensus and so those views would be taken into consideration and, and uh, advice modified to include those. But again, in those occasions when, when it isn't possible to arrive at a consensus and a vote has to be taken, I think two votes for hockey is, is enough in that, uh, in, in, in that mix. So th that's why I would be opposed, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Other councillors to the motion before us? Councillor Kersey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I'm out of order here, uh, please let me know. I searched the agenda high and low to uh, bring this forward, uh, but I felt this was a pro an appropriate place in that it talks about the design process uh, and uh, the role that the um, Panthers could play in that in that uh, or informing uh, the architect as to the needs and um, when I was at the ADAC meeting as an observer as a citizen uh, last week included in that package was uh, a letter from Petrov the architect in which she recommends or suggests that a <coughs> subcommittee of ADAC be formed of four to seven people involving including staff and so I wanted to bring forward the concept uh, that when that ADAC should be uh, given direct uh, direction, if you will, that they should in fact form a subcommittee involving uh, the Y because they will inform the process, involving the uh, Junior B team because they also will inform the process. And uh, but as well, I think we need to include other representatives of the ADAC committee in that in that committee in that subcommittee in that their views could be represented to the architect as well so I hope that you will find that in fact this is the appropriate place to put that forward um, because it appeared from the conversation around the table at the uh, the meeting that I was at that <coughs> the majority of the direction to the architect would be coming from both the Y and the Junior B team, and I didn't think that was appropriate. And there seemed to be some confusion around the fact whether they should form a subcommittee or not form a subcommittee, and I felt that if we as council put forward a specific direction to them to form this subcommittee of four to seven members, including one or two members of staff, uh, that then they could go about doing that, and in fact, uh, the meetings with the architect could be very, uh, very well informed as we move this process forward. So, okay. Councillor, I have some information that um, I did relay. Maybe you're out of the room uh, because of your conflict earlier. So, right. if I may re relay it now. Perfect. Um, the CAO and I and uh, Ms. Mamaliti had a chance to meet with uh, the chair of the Architectural Design Advisory Committee, Mr. Nickel. Um, earlier today to talk about these issues, taking to heart some of the comments uh, from members of the advisory committee about working together um, and uh, opening lines of communication, which was also said at that meeting. Um, we did uh, discuss this particular issue and um, I asked the CAO to perhaps draft a memo to the committee to clarify it. It's, 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 it's not as clear as perhaps it should be and would probably allow for a lot of debate at the uh, advisory committee level and, and here it's, it's debate here. So I'm going to ask the CAO to just comment on the uh, discussion that was held today and the resolution and, and his actions uh, to that. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the conversation with regards to uh, the subcommittee um, was in effect that the, there would be a series or the architect requires some specific information from specific mm -hmm. users. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, we know that the Pelham Panthers, uh, we have an obliga a contractual obligation to provide a change room facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, councils made decision on seating amounts. So the technical type of things that the architect may not appreciate fully are things like how to orientate the seating to protect sight lines on the ice for spectators. 
the needs of the team in the, in, in, in the context of the change room. And then adding a change room impacts things like common space, bathrooms, and a lot of other technical type of information. Uh, same thing could be said for the Y, same thing could be said for uh, Meyer Hawk, either figure, figure skating club, etc. So specialized con uh, consultations would take place uh, with existing members of, of, of ADAC to provide Good. specific advice and expertise. Uh, the subcommittee uh, would be, again, a subcommittee of ADAC that would uh, contain the recommended amount of people as uh, requested by Petrop. Um, and that subcommittee would be responsible for drilling down into the detailed design work that now has to commence in order for the design right. to be completed. The subcommittee would then report back to the ADAC committee as a whole, getting feedback, etc. Uh, and that process would be uh, worked through up to the point of conceptual drawings for the facade as well as functional layout design, detailed design drawings, uh, which then would um, hopefully trigger the public uh, uh, consultation process so that there was some tangible design elements to take to the public to comment on and to receive impact, input back and make necessary changes. Uh, so that was what um, uh, was discussed this afternoon. I'll be putting together some uh, uh, some information relative to that. Thank you very much. Um, as was mentioned at the design committee as well, when we talked about, or they talked about the arena, uh, the idea of those specialized consultations to include figure skating as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that, of course, will occur in other appropriate users, multi-purpose space, et cetera. Um, and just to highlight and build on what the CEO said, um, I think it is important to have something written, uh, not only with this recommendation or suggestion, it's not really a recommendation, suggested way forward for the uh, Architectural Design Advisory Committee um, and their meeting on Thursday, but, but also a timeline. And one of the things that we heard loud and clear mm -hmm. was where, where is this process at? And I think um, even for council, where, where is this at? So I asked the CAO to put together a timeline um, with some recommendations that could be discussed at the uh, Architectural Design Advisory Committee um, during this week. It's, and he needs to obviously speak to the architect about that, but during this week the specialized cons consultations will occur. <coughs> and this week the subcommittees, subcommittee sorry, could meet. Uh, the ADAC could meet the following week, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And let's put some rigor to it, as um, Councillor Papp indicated earlier. Um, you know, time is of the essence on this. So I hope that answers your, your question and your comment, Councillor, and, and uh, my suggestion would be that we do not need to give specific advice to the Architectural and Design Advisory Committee on that. It is their subcommittee. The correspondence is going to them and sort of let them deal with it in that way. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That uh, does bring clarity to it. Uh, perhaps I could add a, a, an addition to the memo. Um, that council has also discussed about having a subcommittee to put together a business case for a second arena. And uh, so perhaps in that memo you could include that uh, such that the committee could be working on collecting the data so that in fact Mr. Stevenson of Leisure Plan could be properly informed of uh, the current information and, and uh, so that the revised report will be up to date and will contain that information that uh, that we need to make a an informed decision. So I I got the gist that they didn't understand that they had that direction and that latitude and I so if we could include that in the memo, that would make it crystal clear to them. Thank you very much, um, Mr. CEO. Do you want to comment on that or anything to add or? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> the councillor is correct uh, that the leisure plan. Uh, review and a potential addendum to the agreement is to look at updating the ICE usage information. So Leisure Plan will be consulting with uh, Pella Minor Hockey, which is on the committee, a member of the committee. They will be consulting with the Junior B team, which is an ex officio member. Uh, they'll also be consulting with other ICE users, such as the Figure Skating Club, which is also a member of the ADAC committee. So um, the user groups represented on the committee are the exact people that Leisure Plan is intending to speak to in order to get the most accurate and up-to-date information to help uh, determine uh, or provide clarity to Council with regards to uh, the timing of building a twin pad, uh, sort of the now or later question. Thank you. So so that, that piece in terms of getting the information, the information will come from the user groups 
uh, that are already using uh, the ice. Um, so whether it's the Junior B uh, club um, and the various <coughs> coaches, those kind of things. But I don't think it's seen as being a broad-based community effort, but rather with the, those that are using the ice and using ice elsewhere. Well, uh, there, there might be a game here and a practice in Thorold or, or, or Waynefleet. And uh, as we had the discussion around the table here that that's the type of information that we want to ensure is included in that uh, leisure plan uh, numbers. And also, uh, the community wants to know where we're at. We know that 75% mm -hmm. is the, uh, the, the, the number that we were looking for in order to say go on the second pad. What's it at? It's not clear. Not clear to council, not clear to the, um, not clear to the community. So um, that's sort of the direction, and we did have that conversation as well this afternoon with Mr. Mayor. I clearly understand that, that it wasn't a broad-based consultation with the community, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my thought was that if we had a subcommittee that worked together, that we could shorten the timelines. Uh, they could work together in putting together the appropriate information, and Mr. Stevenson could meet with all of them at one time and discuss the business plan or the business case around a second pad. If you prefer to do it individually, well, so be it. I, I however, just thought it was more efficient to do it as a single single group. Yeah. That's however, right. however it happens, That's yeah. it'll happen. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, thank yep. you. Lots of latitude for Councillor Kersey on that. Others thank you for the on the motion or with just some since, of that Since we have, we have gone off on that tangent, just to build on some of the comments that were made, I, I think that it, it's necessary that we bring in the Recreation, Culture, and Wellness Committee into this discussion because there are user groups that aren't using things, Silver Stick, for example, uh, sledge hockey, girls hockey, old timers, people that aren't using this because there is no ice time need to have a voice at this as well. I think the best voice for that would be uh, that, uh, that department because they have a handle on people that have been requesting ice and off ice uses and that type of thing. Information from there is vital, I think, to this equation, and I think that's one of the downfalls in the original plan. Things like this were not considered, and I think the, we'll find that the numbers are, are a little bit different. And, uh, and I'll speak to this motion later, but just building on what was said there okay. before Thank is, you. Uh, I think, an important part Thank of the you. equation. Um, information from our director is always welcomed and encouraged. Thank you. Any others, uh, Councillor Papp, to this? <clears throat> yes, uh, to the same thing. I mean, Notwithstanding, and don't take this with any disrespect, it's not just about the ice. There's <coughs> other off-ice uses for the building. And I agree, Councilor Durley, there's, we had for years here, we had a junior, we had lacrosse here. For years it went on, and it was very lucrative, very good. So I don't want to get into the specifics, but wherever we can engage so we can maximize the use of those both pads so it produces the kind of viability that we need to keep going, I would encourage it. So not limiting it to just, you know, I don't want to say just the ice, but also the other components that, are, that we have, some of us have witnessed over the years that have been very successful, and we would probably like to see those things come back. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. So uh, I allowed a lot of latitude. Anyone else want to take that latitude, or should we turn to Councillor Durley on the motion before us? Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, getting back to the motion, as it's uh, said, we do have an agreement with the junior team. We do have a commitment with the junior team. They have a commitment with us. Junior hockey is a completely different animal from minor hockey or old-timers hockey. <laughs> they have some uh, special needs, and I use that term in lack of another term, uh, and the, uh, they have some special requirements for storage and these type of things so uh, definitely they should have a, a voice to say what is involved in a junior hockey as opposed to what is involved with minor hockey or other hockey groups. I think there's some vital information that has to come from this group. They should be a full voting member because they are in an agreement not like uh, uh, the, what we just said. Somebody who's not, we've given them full voting rights and we're giving somebody that we have in here, we, we're not going to give it to them. So I, I think we need to provide that status to them. Okay, thank you very much. Any others to the motion? We ready for calling the question? All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Some good discussion and uh, again, thank you to the members of the uh, Architectural Design Advisory Committee for being here and Mr. Nickel as well. Thank you. This is the uh, 
uh, I allowed the latitude because <coughs> unfinished business update on leisure plan verbal. Mr. CEO, is there anything more to say? No, no, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. Uh, in terms of in terms of timing, um, what's our what's our hope on this? Uh, as quickly as possible, the consultant is. Uh, I'm just waiting, and I should hear any day about setting up specific timelines. He was just trying to get a schedule where he could come in and meet with the various groups. Uh, we had done it as a group before, uh, and I suspect that's the most efficient way, as was suggested by Councillor Kuzu. Okay. Thank you. Anything? Any other questions regarding that? We look forward to that report. Uh, and that report will have a little bit more deep, um, or at least Mr. Stevenson will look in a more detailed way with my understanding uh, with the various users. Um, and as I think we talked about around this table, is this particular team in? Yes. Is this particular team in? Oh, no, it's not. Or this particular use, et cetera. Um, so looking forward to that uh, being completed. Councillor Pat? Uh, 30 seconds. So just uh, through you to the CEO, could we have some sense of the timeline at our next meeting in April? Yes, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. You can give us some deadlines because we've got to get going. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't mean to overstate it, but we've got to get going. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to that, uh, Mr. CEO, and your you. report in April. Anything further? Thank you. Now we'll move to uh, presentation consideration of bylaws. It's been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. Be it resolved that the, the Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due consideration to the following bylaw, do now read a first, second, and third time and do pass, and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are here, uh, hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. One, being a bylaw to appoint Mr. Craig Genesee and Mr. John Ross as municipal weed inspectors for the Corporation of the Town of Pelham and to repeal <laughs> bylaw. Uh, one zero six seven nineteen eighty six, and being a bylaw to declare the town-owned lands described in Schedule A attached to and forming part of this bylaw surplus to the needs of the municipality, and therefore available for disposition. I'm going to ask the clerk to just comment on that second uh, bylaw, Madam Clerk. Uh, can you please? Certainly, through you, Mr. Mayor. This um, bylaw deals with the property formerly housing the um, Fenwick Fire Station or Pelham Fire Station Number Two and um, rising after the closed session meeting last week, council determined that the lands are surplus to the needs of the municipality and directed the clerk to prepare the necessary bylaw. Thank you very much. And I think the bylaw that was distributed didn't have the municipal address on it. And I'm pleased now that that was amended and will be included here that it's, it's that, I don't know, what, whatever the address is on Welland Road. So thank you very much. Anything further to these bylaws? There being no others, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is um, matters arising out of Committee of the Whole or Policy and Priorities Committee. Uh, Councillor Junkin asked that something be added to the agenda. Councillor Junkin. <coughs> We had talked about the uh, performance evaluations, and they, uh, I believe they all are done now. Uh, I was just wondering, as uh, my question states, what the overall uh, increases were for the uh, senior staff, directors, and uh, hourly employees. Thank you very much. Ms. Gilbert. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I was wondering, could um, Councillor um, Jenkins just give me an explanation as to why he's looking for the information, and then perhaps I can uh, provide the information in a, uh, a reasonable format that can answer his question. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Why do I want? Well, to what, what what are you what are you looking for? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I just uh, as as uh, directors of the corporation, I just. Uh, uh, did they get caught? I just want to know. Uh, but I guess we should know what we're paying our, uh, how much of an increase our, our employees got. Was it 4%, 5%, cost of living? That, that's all, just basic knowledge. Okay. Ms. Gilbert. Mr. Mayor, um, uh, if it's uh, sufficient to you, Councillor, may I present the information perhaps um, in uh, a chart format that I'll give you the number of employee employees um, that received increases by uh, percentage increase. I hesitate to give you just a list of all of our employees with their increases as I'm not sure that information would be relevant for you. I prefer to collate it in a much more organized fashion that could perhaps yeah. give you just sort of a general overview of where our staff fell. Yeah, just a, yeah, just, yeah, just, that's right, just a general overview is all I need. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll provide that to you. So I can move this motion or do we... Councillor Kersey to the matter? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, perhaps uh, while we're on the subject of 
performance evaluations, we could give direction to staff to bring us a general overview of the uh, performance evaluation process, how it was received by our staff, any changes that have been proposed, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think it would be very informative to council and help us uh, to understand uh, what we've just been through. This is the first year and how, we're, how we're, it was received by our staff. Okay, thank you, Mr. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, absolutely. To answer the councillor's question, um, uh, our HR director is relatively new, although as of today she finally has some seniority. Um, but she will be coming to council with regular monthly reports, and I will ask her to give a uh, thorough briefing on the uh, performance management plan. Uh, there's been a number of things that uh, uh, procedurally we have uh, improved on. I'm happy to report that to Council. Uh, we have an all-staff meeting on Wednesday. Uh, Ms. Gilbert will be making a presentation to the staff as well, so we'll be happy to provide that information. Okay, thank you. So can the two items be uh, included in uh, Ms. Gilbert's report Absolutely. for next, next round? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll take staff, uh, can staff take that as direction, Mr. Sam? That's absolutely the Okay, anything further to the matter? We look forward to that information coming forward. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now we do have some uh, in-camera items and as we uh, we do, we postpone that and then go into committee. So it has been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Dearly, be it resolved that Council recess the in-camera portion of the meeting and reconvene <coughs> immediately following the committee meeting scheduled for this evening. I'm going to call the question to all those in favour, any opposed, that motion is carried. Let's take a brief five minute recess before we start committee. Thank you. I see that we have quorum and I call this uh, meeting back to order. It's been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Gurley. Be it resolved. Oh, that's the, that's the last motion. Sorry. Be it resolved this regular uh, meeting of Council of March 16, 2015. Do now reconvene to complete the agenda. I'm with it now. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. That motion is carried. We left off just before uh, the in-camera session, as is our normal practice. So it has been moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Durley. Be it resolved, the next portion may be closed to the public in order to consider the following. One, item under Section 239 2B, personal matters about an Id identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. And two, item under Section 239 2C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. Um, I do want to mention to Council that I did ask the clerk to include in the agenda, um, we're trying to take heart uh, to try to be as open and transparent as, as possible. So I did ask, um, as is one of our directions or one of our strategic plans, so I did ask the clerk to add rise from in camera, that motion uh, or that portion on the agenda. So it would indicate the first reason why we're going into closed session. Just. We'll, we'll try and incorporate that as much as possible where we can to to indicate why we're going in and then if we're rising with report, the rationale be behind it. So I did want to point that out to Council. And are you ready for calling the question? All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. We will now move into closed session. Thank you very much. It has been <coughs> moved by uh, Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley. Be it resolved that Council adjourn the in-camera session and that Council do now rise with report. All those in favour? Any opposed? Motion carried.
let's deal with the first agenda item. Let me we'll put that. Here it is. Okay. Moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor King. Be it resolved, the appointments to the board and the committees be approved. As submitted. The motion that was recommended was was voting on each of the appointments. We've come to some conclusions in terms of those appointments. Uh, so we don't need to vote on that. We'll have some other motions. And that the clerk be directed to prepare a necessary bylaw for consideration next regular meeting of council, the Architectural Design Advisory Committee, Council Representative, Community Beautification Committee, Livestock Value Repound Keeper, Fence Viewer, Pelham Active Transportation Committee, Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee, Summerfest uh, Committee, Council Representative, and further that the clerk be directed to re-advertise for the Community Beautification Committee, which was formerly known as the Communities in Bloom Committee, the Pelham Active Transportation are we advertising for Pelham Active Transportation? Yeah, and the Pelham Summerfest Committee. And that the terms of reference for the Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee be increased uh, the resident appointments to six members. Yep. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, can we. Should that badge be up to six? Up to six, yes. In case you yeah. end up with five? Yep, up to six members. Okay, so thank you, Councillor. We'll take that as a friendly amendment. Um, do we need to say some of the decisions or will they come out? How, how does that work, Madam Clerk? You could say, uh, you could just state that all of the applications were approved. Yep. Okay. So all of the citizen applications and various committee applications were, are, are with this motion will be accepted by council and we appreciate members of the public coming forward uh, for that. And I am going to say, um, what the recommendation is, I don't know if we, do we need a separate motion for council appointments to those committees? You can include it on the same motion. Okay. Maybe I can have a, uh, an amendment to this motion that council uh, appoint Councillor Ribiak to the Community Beautification Committee, Councillor King to the Active Transportation Committee, Councillor Papp to the Seniors Advisory Committee, Councillor Kersey to the Summerfest Committee and Councillor Durley to the Architectural Design Advisory Committee. Can I have an um, amendment or an addition to this? Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Kersey. I'm going to call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment carries. And then let's deal specifically with the um, livestock value or pound keeper fence viewer. Can we have an amendment that we uh, appoint both Mr. Tucker and Mr. Darling? as the livestock valuer. We appoint Councillor um, Junkin as the pound keeper, and we appoint Mr. Tucker as the fence viewer. Okay, can we have an amendment? Um, Tucker, Tucker is also Tucker's a pound keeper, a pound keeper for, for keeper horses. Too. Oh, pound keeper for horses, I'm sorry. And and Mr. Tucker is pound keeper for horses. Like Councillor horses Junkin is pound keeper for cattle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Moved by Councillor Kersey, seconded by Councillor Papp. All those in You're favor in. of that amendment. <laughs> That amendment carries. Thank you. And then, is that good? We're all clear? All right, then. Okay, I'm going to call the... Are we okay, Council? I'm going to call the question then on the motion as twice amended. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. It has been moved by Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Kersey, that the Chief Administrative Officer of BN is hereby authorized to carry out the directions of Council's outline in the in-camera meeting of today's date regarding the closed session item 2A. All those in favor? I can't be on that. You can't vote on that. Thank you. I can't be on that. Uh, and do you want to disclose your I do. conflicts of interest? Uh, yeah, I have a conflict of interest with item 2, uh, the in-camera session. Uh, similar to what I had with the MOU, uh, my wife owns a property in which there's a fitness center. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. So, Councillor Pat moves that I need a seconder. Councillor, uh, I'm going to put Councillor King down as a seconder. Uh, thank you, and we'll, you don't have to leave. We'll just note that you're not going to vote, you declare conflict. Um, I'm going to call the question all those of the members that are eligible to vote, all those in favor. Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. 
You'll fill that in. I got six. Uh, nine, moved by Councilor Pat. Uh, sorry, moved by Councilor Junkin, second by Councilor Durley. Be resolved. Following bylaw be read a first, second, third time passed, being a bylaw to adopt, ratify, confirm the proceedings of council held today. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Moved by Councilor Junkin, second by Councilor Rebiak. Be it resolved this regular meeting of council be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday, April 7th, 2015, unless sooner called by the mayor. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned until Tuesday because of the holiday. Thank you. 60 seconds to spare. Well done. <laughs>